What's going on, you nerds? We're back in Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. This time I'm showing you guys a DM event that I hosted a couple days back. Um, gonna try to give you guys, you know, the, the rundown on how I actually uh, executed this and, you know, for anyone that's actually trying to become a dungeon master in their own game through pen and paper or a digital game, maybe this will give you some ideas. Um, you know, by no means am I saying I'm like a professional dungeon master, but, um, you know, I, I've done it a couple times now and I feel like I've got the hang of it, so I'm just trying to give my experience to anyone who might not have as much experience as, as me. Um, so first I'd just like to s start by doing some quick jot notes that I do in my notebook of just the rundown of what I, or what should happen in this event, like what exactly story am I telling, how am I gonna what's the beginning, middle, and end, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, I, I made the starting location as a very neutral ground um, for a very specific reason. Uh, we, had a not, uh, we had a lot of new players coming in, and uh, this, main ev this event is mainly going to be in the forest, which is a few leagues away, but it's not so easily... It's not easily found because it's not in, like, the maps that we have in the game. Um, you can really only find it, like... You know, if you stumble upon it or if another player is, like, showing you there. So, uh, I, I just decided to put it in a very neutral territory where, like, the new players could find it and the old players could find it because it's, uh, the city is, like, very much in the, uh, um, starting, uh, you know, starting circle. When, when you first start the game, it's kind of early on in the, in your levels that you'll stumble upon this, uh, city. And the, the other reason why I you know, kind of put it here is just because these two characters, these two NPCs that are giving the quest are from the forest. And usually, you know, uh, being a druid of the forest or the elf of the forest, they, they're not really one to be comfortable in civilization going into other cities or towns. They, they like the wilderness, so I felt like it just made sense to just keep it outside the border lore-wise with, with these two characters. Uh, so right now we're kind of just uh, watching them head to the, the forest. So I didn't really do much here, I, I kind of just made sure that nobody died. Usually in these DM events, we, we try to not to have characters like, you know, permanently die or, or have to die and respawn. Um, you know, it kind of just takes away from like the fun of it, even though, you know, being a DM that you do try to uh, keep things um, neutral ground, you know, you, you don't want to help players, but you don't want to like mess with them either. like. Part of the uh, DM experience is just trying to tell the story that you want to tell. You don't want to uh, um, interfere too much. That that might make things unrealistic at a certain point. Um, but I did try to like remove some creatures because they're just too strong for the, for this party. Our uh, level range was like from level fourteen to you know level one, and when you're in a party like that, with you know level fourteens and level ones in a party of like how many people are there? Two, four, six. Eight maybe and you know with this server it, it all uh, all the spawns kind of depend on the number of people and the average level party so you know the level ones are getting spawns for level sevens when you know it's, it's kind of unreal or it's kind of uh, unfair so I kind of just tried to make sure uh, at least everyone got there safe so right now I told them to wait at the entrance of the forest which is uh, just you know through that creek there um, because we have a new player coming in, and I offered to bring her along for this DM event. Uh, you know, why not show a, a new player um, what to expect from from the server? You know, we we try to do a lot of DM events to keep things dynamic, keep, keep things always different. So when you join the game and do something, you don't always have that same result. It's always something new and different. Uh, so right now we're in the actual forest. This is where the main event DM event is. These guys got a little bit lost, so I had to try to reel them in but yeah, I had to give them you know spot checks or skill skill or search checks spot checks or search checks to figure out where to go and we eventually get to this area which I purposefully like designated this like battle area just because I think it looks cool with like the the creek and stuff when I was first uh, you know figuring out what sections to use when I saw this I'm like oh wow I'm, I'm using this so uh, there's a lot of pre-planning that you do during team events like it's always good to plan ahead of time so you you know what's going or you you know what you should do if something happens um, always being prepared because with Dungeons and Dragons like choices are everything like 
a player has a choice to really do anything and as a DM you always have to react to that so you should always be aware of what's going on so uh, you can better uh, you know ha have a proper response to, to anything that m might possibly come up so this next part I, I thought it was pretty cool I think what's great about being a DM is that having full control over everything you and having such a a wide variety of, of things at your disposal because you can really do anything um, you have a chance to mix so many different types of stories and uh, this particular story it needs a little bit of backstory about this but I'm gonna try to make it as quick as possible in the Forgotten Realms there's a period of time in which all the gods were sent down to earth as punishment um, so basically anyone that follows these particular deities, or I guess any deity, um, has no control of any powers or, or uh, you know, divine spell casting or healing or any sort of um, wizard or sorcerer powers, like none of that. Well, the sorcerer and wizard powers are, are available, but um, it's not um, filtered, I guess you can say, where if you're casting a spell, there's a chance that it might not cast a spell that you want to cast, and it might end up being something else. Um, so it's called wild magic, um, which basically means if you're uh, casting a spell, there's a chance that it might not work or it might do something completely different. That's only for arcane spells like wizards and sorcerers and bards, but for divine spell casters like clerics, druids, rangers, uh, paladins, and that sort, they can't cast at all unless they're in close proximity with their actual god who is on this earth, or I guess earth is Toral. Um, so, you know, for the most part, you're not going to be able to cast anything if you're, if you're a divine spellcaster unless you're close to them. So with that backstory, one of these gods is named Malar, who is, I, I kind of made his avatar into, you know, just giant, like, werewolf. Because Malar is one for uh, the hunt, you know, he's kind of, like, animalistic and savage and, you know, he just wants, like, blood and, and to hunt and kill things. Um, so I thought it was, a, it was a pretty interesting story to have these gods come down to earth and now we can actually play these gods and have these characters interact with these gods and see. And what's cool about it is two of these characters are actually followers of this particular god. And what I did was gave them like this ultimatum sort of. Basically saying, you're my follower, come fight with me to fight your own teammates that came, uh, that came along with you. And uh, kudos to them for actually doing it. There's actually a lot more new players that were followers of Malar that I hope they had come. Because I had a, a, an idea that was, um, I thought would have been pretty cool. Um, one of the characters had his arm cut off. And I thought it would have been an interesting thing where if he met Malar, he actually didn't come to this event. But he, if he had met Malar, I would have roleplayed giving his arm back when Malar reached back into godhood. Once, the, you know, once this time frame of of the the god's punishment is up um malar would have gifted his arm back as you know kind of like a reward for fighting with him but unfortunately he didn't come um unfortunate but you know uh, that's uh as i said you know all, all D, D is all about choices so, you know sometimes people come sometimes people make make the right choices make the wrong choices um there's really no like right or wrong it's just different paths that you take and you know uh, that's just how it is um, so right now, you know, I have Malar fighting with these, uh, you know, these adventures with his two minions now fighting with them, and I'm kind of just spawning in, you know, werewolves and stuff uh, as like his little minions. This is like the main, uh, the climax of it basically. Like this, this is pretty much the last battle, um, for obvious reasons. You know, it's like the final boss kind of thing. Um, I actually also made him immortal. Um, so he can't actually die, um, the, this Malar character, because um, in the actual Forgotten Realms universe, at this exact time, Malar is not dead. So I can't actually have him die because it just wouldn't fit the lore of, of you know, the server and, and the, you know, Forgotten Realms. So I purposefully kept him alive, plus I had to give him some, you know, last, uh, um, last minute dialogue before he escapes and I didn't want to you know have him die from that so right now this is you know I already know there's no chance of killing him so I'm kind of just spawning in some extra monsters just to make it a little bit more a little bit more interesting um, it was kind of difficult because these 
the ranges are so different. The level ranges are so different that it was hard to uh, adjust to the the players who are a lot stronger and the players who are a lot weaker. And uh, I actually also put in another god. I think I might have mentioned this earlier. I had, so there's basically two gods fighting right now. The werewolf god is Malar and the unicorn god is Luru. Who is like the queen of, of unicorns, the queen of talking beasts. Um, so it's sort of like a god versus a god right now. Uh, both of them, you know, w with the lore, both of them do survive. So, I, you know, I had to make both of them immortal. Uh, at a certain point, I had to limbo um, Malara away, which basically means just kind of have him disappear. And then sort of just role-playing that he went, he climbed back up in the trees into safety and, you know, giving his last-minute speech of, uh, you know, I'll get you next time, you know. Powerpuff Girls, or <laughs> you know, whatever, um, and kind of have them escape for another day, and that that was basically the the uh, event. Uh, I I left the group now to plant the two NPCs that gave the quest out. Uh, basically, told them like, yeah, we'll meet you back at this certain place. So I'm kind of putting them back right now, while the rest of the group is kind of just talking and you know, role playing whatever they need to role play. Uh, so yeah, this is just a quick setup, putting them back teleporting back to this group and uh, teleporting them to that same location the reason why they can't transition back to that other map is because I actually manually put them there I had to teleport them there because that map is somewhere completely different from where this particular map is they're not side by side so I had to actually make a copy of that old of that uh, map with that big fight because I like that creek so I had to manually teleport them there and then teleport them back to the, the you know main location of the forest so this is the conclusion they're sort of just giving a quick recap of, of what happened of course these two characters don't know you know in a role-playing sense so they're just updating them um, you know what's cool about this you can actually speak different languages so I had to balance back and forth between talking in elven with one character and then talking in common or like English with the other character with the other um, players who can't speak elven so yeah, I was kind of having two two conversations at the same time um, so that's basically it I mean it was very simple just not it wasn't too much going on um, it was just kind of like that one big fight at the end um, but I, I purposely planned that it wasn't it wasn't meant to be extremely complex or anything like that it, it was just a quick story that I wanted to tell um, and and you know you have characters meeting gods and uh, I think that's pretty cool. And during the this event where the gods are banished and put on Toril, uh, why not have stories to tell about gods? They're like you're not really gonna get that chance again because once that event is up, then um, it doesn't really make sense to have those characters come back down. You would rather stay as god, stay as gods, than come back down to earth to, you know, be like a normal person. Um, so that, that's kind of a helpful tip, I guess, for DMs is just playing to the situation, um, figuring out what's a interesting way to tell a story and keep people engaged. So that's about it. A uh, fairly quick and easy event. Um, you know, I, I, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can tell stories. Uh, this is just mine, just because I, um, I didn't want to have too much. I didn't want to make it too complex and too much planned. I kind of just want to get some content out for these players. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, if you want to do, if you want to see other uh, events, you know, quick DM encounters too. Uh, let me know. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and uh, I'll see you later, nerds.